In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get this cool compound texture effect in Photoshop using a free download from the printer trash asset pack that I put out last year. I've used this type of effect like a few times on Instagram and uh, I've been asked about how I do it specifically. I know it's taken me a while to get around to doing this, but just as like a follow on from the last video to show you some more like fun ways to apply texturing in Photoshop without all the boring explanation that I did in the last video, that's what this video is going to cover. Um, I'm also just going to try and cover some ways that you can get more out of the textures you've already got so that, um, you know, if you, we've all got like a few textures that we love using and using the methods that I show today, uh, you can reuse your textures without them looking samey and without them like just looking like you've slapped your usual favorite texture on a new piece of design work. As I said, we're going to be using the free printer trash download. So go ahead ahead and download that from studio aaa.com other textures on there as well that are free if you want to try it out with those but uh, I've already obviously got that here and I've also got a poster design that I've just thrown together for this video obviously finally making use of this graphic here with the logo in the mouth and the bitmap in I covered this in the dithering video and I've got like the typography at the top and some like promotional copy text about my website and how I always include a lot of files and whatever I make but that's like, that's all beside the point. To get started, just pull in the Studio AAA Printer Trash Free 1 and 3 texture. I'm just gonna drag and drop those into my design. So it's worth mentioning that my poster design here, I've put it in a layer group just to make the effect easier that I'm gonna apply later on. So maybe you would wanna do the same for yours. So maybe you'd wanna do the same for yours. First things first is take the plain printer ink texture. So the one labeled as just texture number one scale that up and apply a blend mode so you've got a nice even texture across whatever it is you're working on this is going to act as like the base texture that we're going to apply effects to later on and then pull the third texture just to the top of your layers palette and you might notice that these are literally the same piece of paper so what i've done is worked on top of the effects on this piece of paper for the uh, first texture and then just scanned in like before and after so that's why these two like match up quite well with the third texture selected just scale it up until you've cropped out any detail that you don't want to bring over into the final effect. So for me, I'm going to pull out uh, until you can't see these big rips at the bottom left and the top right, just because I'd like to go for something subtle today. And then once you've cropped to uh, where you're happy with, come up to image adjustments and levels. And then this arrowhead uh, sort of anchor point lever on the left, just pull that in until you are cutting out a good amount of the sort of inkiness that comes through on this one. So obviously we're getting that from the first texture we applied so we don't need it in this one so i'm going to pull mine up to like 70 between 70 and 80 if you want to copy my settings that'll be something that that gets easier uh when you've done this process more than once obviously personal preference you can you can pull it further if you'd like but yeah i'm gonna go 78 for mine once you've done that right click and convert to smart object and then right click again and go to blending options then you're going to pull in this lever here where it says current layer just to get rid of the darker values of the image and replace them with transparency basically so i'm going to go to like 54 for mine then again right click and convert to smart object so now you have got the isolated highlights from the texture that you dragged in a moment ago. And we can use this asset to start creating compound texture effects on this image and texture that we've applied to your design. The first and most obvious way is through a blend mode. Um, depending on what sort of image you're working on, obviously your blend mode is going to be different. I'm going to go for hard light for mine. Obviously like subtle, but uh, this is already more legible and like sort of cooler than what you would have I've got out of just using the third texture on its own without sort of doing any edit into it. I'm then going to press control on my keyboard and hover over the third texture layer and click on the thumbnail, which is going to select all the pixels that are in that layer now. And if I come back down to my layer group for my poster design, if you duplicate the poster design and then on the duplicated version, add a layer mask, you'll see nothing has changed. But if you alt click on the layer mask, you'll see now the duplicated instance of your poster design is being masked into the highlights that we isolated a moment ago, which means now that if we turn down the opacity of the poster design group, like the original group, you'll see it's going to just fade into this texture. So you can um, still see that my design is there, 
but it's completely faded into the original ink texture that we pulled in before. So you can you can literally turn the opacity all the way down if you want it to be completely illegible. But um, yeah, I'm gonna leave mine at like 12, 13, 14. So you can still read the text and stuff, but uh, it just looks quite like worn down and grungy and stuff now. Now, obviously this might be the first time you are running through this exact process in Photoshop, but I'm sure that you all have, anyone watching this, you have effects that you are familiar with and comfortable using that you can apply to this layer mask here. So if I alt and click on the layer mask for the copied design group um, that we just created a minute ago, you'll see that now we've just got the layer mask here. So if you wanted to make changes to the effect that uh, it's been blended in sort of here with the inky texture. You can do that by selecting the layer mask and coming up to image. You can apply any of these that aren't grayed out. And you can also, if you come to filter, you can also apply any of these that aren't grayed out. So I'm gonna apply a color halftone effect. I'm not gonna explain color halftone in this video because it like needs its own video really. But um, yeah, if you want me to do that in a later video, I'm happy to do that. I'm just gonna leave the settings default and press okay. Now, this might not come across really well in the video when I'm zoomed out. But if you zoom in now, you'll see that the masked highlights from the original texture have now got a half tone applied to them. So if you now come out of the mask view by just clicking out, uh, like clicking like a blank space or on another layer and zoom in, you can see that the half tone effect is coming through with the texture to just like combine the two effects. If you wanted to customize it even further, you can go to filter. Let me actually just select the image mask first. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just apply a really subtle Gaussian blur. It doesn't have to be like, I'm going for 0.5 here. Um, you don't have to do anything drastic. And then come to image adjustments and threshold you can now redefine the edge of the highlights in the mask. So obviously if you pull it all the way to the left, you're expanding the edges. If you pull it all the way to the right, you are like um, diminishing the edges, I guess. So if I wanted the half tone effect to be stronger, uh, I can expand the edges by moving the threshold to the left. And if I click off of that now, you can see that the half tone effect is like bleeding through into the design through the mask. You can also invert the mask. So you can see, just control, click on the mask and press control I, and you can invert which layers, which pixels, sorry, are coming through. And of course, you've still got this image here at the top. So if you wanted to start doing more effects like this, you just come back to your isolated highlights at the top, control click again. And for example, this time you can add a gradient map. Um, so obviously for my design here, I've got the, the like vampire teeth and the word bite and stuff. So, um, I mean, it's March now, but this is like a very Halloween-y design. So I'm gonna go for red through my gradient map. And if I just pull the red sort of anchor point to the right, then it's only gonna affect the lighter layers. If I go left, it'll affect the darker layers, but I wanna keep the ink texture as a background. So I'm gonna keep the red close to the white value on the gradient map and press okay. So from there, like, I don't know if I, if I zoom in, I don't know how well this comes across, but you've essentially got the original poster design at the bottom, which is being masked through your highlights of your texture, which have a half tone effect on them. Now you are coloring in essentially through the use of a gradient map, like the edges of the highlights that came through from the original texture layer that we applied. Like, I know this is a little bit hard to, hard to like put into words like what, what we're doing here, but you are just compounding more and more effects through the textures, mask, and other effects that you might be like comfortable with in Photoshop. Um, obviously bear in mind as well that you can add blend modes to your adjustment layers too. So if I go like darken or multiply on this one, it, it gets a little bit more subtle. You can continue to experiment with really any, any effect in Photoshop using like this process really that doesn't look great so i'm going to delete the gradient map on mine but um yeah even if i just disable the hard light blend that i added at the top you've now essentially filtered your half tone through an existing texture so it looks like distressed half tone rather than if for example you just applied a default image half tone um to it which would look just quite uniform and normal across the board like this i'm just going to delete that now and if i pull in the distressed half tone again you can see that um it just looks cooler basically <laughs> like i don't really have like a descriptor for it but yeah it just looks cooler i don't know if she follows this exact 
um, process, but someone who does a really great job of this, if you are looking for more examples of like half tone and texturing is a designer called Piper Ferrari, who I will show on screen and just link to below just because yeah, she does like cool stuff, cooler than this uh, with like similar effects. So um, I'm just gonna select my pixels and add a levels adjustment uh, just to make, just to increase the contrast on here just because that uh, inky texture is just a little bit gray for my liking. So all I've done there is invert the mask so that essentially the areas outside of the highlighted half tone area are just gonna have more contrast applied to them now. And to be honest, I'm I'm really happy with that. You can just continue though, like using these pixels to, for example, you go to layer, new fill layer, and add a solid color, you can start like doing more blending, like you can blend in, I don't know, I'm just trying to experiment now so you can see how like versatile this type of effect is. You can blend in an orange color if you wanted to just tint the work orange a little bit. I always like using this shade of green, so I'm gonna try that out. But yeah, I will show my final uh, export on screen now because I don't know how well this comes through in the recording. And I know this video is not as in-depth or explainy as my usual content that I put out on YouTube, but I know that the last texturing video was quite detail heavy and like um, computer science heavy and like, I don't wanna say boring, or dull because I find it quite interesting but yeah it wasn't like the most fun representation of texturing in Photoshop whereas effects like this where you are compounding and like multiplying the texture effect that you're applying um, I love working with this. It's rare that you will get the same effect twice out of out of the textures that you chose. So if I didn't go for half tone here and I went for something else in filter gallery, obviously the output will be much different. If I didn't go for green, if I uh, did a different like levels input at the start, obviously it would it would look different and there's lots of variations you can do. Yeah, if you are going to apply this outside of using the free printer trash textures, then all you really need is a base layer. So like a base texture, which is what we used this one for the first one. And then just a texture with some highlights, uh, a texture with just some more like variation to it that matches the base one. And you can run away with like whatever you want, whether it's my textures, your own textures that you've scanned in or wherever you found them on the internet. For me, for this video, um, that is gonna be about it, I think. I do usually prefer something a bit more subtle than this, but um, I'm trying to make things more like in your face a little bit so that they come across better on the video because when I've done like recordings and I don't go far enough with the video, like you just can't tell that anything's even happening in the screen recording. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video and the textures that I put out for this pack for free or anything I've spoke about today, I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to the channel or share this video with any of your creative friends. If you like the free resources, I am making one free graphic design resource every single month at studiotriplea.com and I'll be covering every single one that I do on this channel this year. So far this year, I've done a free CD mock-up, free dithering actions for Photoshop and free VHS emulated like CRT textures. So yeah, if you like the sounds of any of that stuff, studiotriplea.com uh, or subscribe to this channel. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.